Of course, we were going to have some questions about your time at AMD. Uh, Hector asks, okay. uh, you returned during a challenging time, which <laughs> you've alluded to just now. Um, uh -huh. What was the morale like? What, was, where, was it, was it, it was fight? Bad. Was it flight? Uh, resignation. Ooh, apathy. Yeah, so when I the joined worst. there, so, 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 so I'd worked at AMD. I, I liked the, like when I was in AMD in 98, 99, something like that. Um, I liked the culture of, it's a teamwork culture. Um, Apple was much more of a hard edge, do the best excellence, you know, reward the top kind of culture. Um, so I was, I was intrigued. I knew, I thought they were going bankrupt when I joined. Um, it was closer than I thought. They had fired a third of the people. I think we ultimately laid off over half the company. Um, but the people that were there liked each other. Um, you know the expression, the rats leave the sinking ship? There weren't many rats at AMD when I got there. They'd all left. And the people that were there were often tactically very good. And they were good to work with. So, and I thought it would be fun to figure out how to turn the company around. Yeah, I, well, and it I didn't was gonna... work, you know. Like I just get another job. It's like, like I wasn't really worried about jobs. So, so I went in there sort of knowing, you know, what's going on. There were some things that, to be honest, were worse than I thought. Yeah, you nobody know, talks about the rat that, that um, voluntarily swims back to the sinking ship. So I, it, yeah. put us yeah, in your, that's, yeah, that's put me. us in Is your that head. What you're trying to say that. Yeah, well, I, mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I call a spade a spade. <laughs> Well, I was friends with Mark Papermaster, and I said I wanted to lead the CPU team, and they wanted me to be the architect. And I thought, I could never pull this off if I'm the architect and somebody else manages this to people, because building a great product takes a combination of architecture, teamwork, organization, all kinds of stuff. And uh, I hadn't managed like 500 people before, but I read a book about it. It's not that hard. <laughs> Actually, to be honest, I read 10 books about it. I hired a consultant. It was excellent about this kind of stuff. Okay, so it's a little and bit hard then. <laughs> yeah, 10 books. <laughs> it took a couple of weeks. <laughs> but, right, uh, it was really on. fun. And then, well, uh, Rory Reed was CEO at the time, and I told him I had to cancel all the projects and start over. And he's like, yeah, nobody cares if, you know, if we have like a 50% of the competition or 53. And, uh, <laughs> you know, go ahead and do it. So I had a lot of freedom. <laughs> and then a lot of people had a lot of good ideas. You know, it wasn't just me. Like, so we kind of unlocked it, you know. And I'd say a lot of people didn't believe in the project. Some of them didn't believe it right till it was finished. Really? Because they were well, so used to AMD losing. Yeah. Well, hold on a second. How does that happen? Th okay, this is something that maybe is does not. Oh, engineers speak are very determined people. They can work on something they know is never going to work, but they're having fun doing their part, and they just soldier on. Like it's, it's okay, fun. but hold on a second. And maybe this isn't your problem, because you know you can tell yeah. just from the blunt honesty that you, you haven't spent a day in marketing in your life. Um, but oh, I'm great at marketing. I can, I can sell you your own shirt. Like, <laughs> that's a book about it. It's not that hard. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but help me out here, because this is something that blows my mind, is... A product will arrive, and us monkeys, who basically are just like, I don't know, ooh, 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 run game, you know, measure frames per second, yeah, yes. are sitting here going, hey guys, you got the pricing way wrong. You're at, you're at, you're at 80 percent of the competition, and you're priced 20 percent higher, and you get people who presumably talk to people who worked on the bloody thing, and they're like, oh, really? And you just kind of go, whoa, 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 whoa. where does this disconnect come from? How could you possibly be, help me with this, how could you possibly be an architect or, or someone working on Zen? You got your nose right up against this thing and you go, I don't know, maybe this thing, shit, I have no idea. How does that happen? How can we tell and they can't? I'm sorry, what question you're asking? Okay, the question you're like, saying. Some of the people working yeah. on Zen, up until the very end, you go, yeah, they didn't, they didn't believe in it. How's that even possible? Because they're seeing... They well, see they, the, they'd worked on the previous product that wasn't any good, and, you know, they just assumed this wouldn't be... I don't know. But they got like, the I same... Like, I would tell people what we're doing, and they would look at me like, Jim, we could never do that. We're not that good or something. I don't know. <laughs> so here's a funny thing. So a friend of mine told me this years ago. So every company will tell you, we only hire the best. We're the smartest people in the world. 
And what he said is that 100 people, you can have a really like excellent group. And at 1,000 people, you can be above average. And at 10,000, all companies are average. Like it's true, just by statistics. Now, there's a question about whether you lead from the top or the middle. Like there's a bunch of management theories about this. And then there's, there's a lot of problems with how you do things. And then there's this uh, risk reward. If you have an okay design and you want to make it 10% better, it might be really hard. But if you do a new design aim 30% better, you can do it. But the risk of that's way higher. And so people make bad risk reward trade-offs. Like the existential risk of being 50% the performance of your competition was 100%. And yet they were doing low risk 5% moves. Right. So we said, hey, let's build Zen to be just as fast as, I think it's, we started out, I said, we'll, we'll beat Haswell, which was a processor competition at the time. And which, by the way, was shooting behind the duck a little bit because we assumed Intel would keep moving. But as that was know, my next question. Was how much, how much was, did Intel... Which was handy save AMD <laughs> by just stagnating yeah. like that. I mean, 50%. okay, that's 50%. a lot. Now, you need a good me. design. Hey, and, and somebody said, uh, he always told me I was, I, I did not bet on luck enough. Cause you know, I, I do what I can and I assume everybody else is doing what they can, but I, I didn't see that coming. So I think that was pretty handy for them. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. And, uh, so, Tell me right now. But it was a good design and it was clean. So one of the things people don't realize is when we built Zen, you know, we had a pretty clean architecture and redid the CAD tools, the methodologies, the flows and stuff. And then, you know, Zen 1, 2, 3, 4, they were able to make pretty good progress. And then what happens is at some point progress starts to slow down because you really need to do a big, either a from scratch or a big rewrite and then you know, to get on the next curve. And that's, that's, that's one of those complicated things. Now tell me this. Um, right now, realistically, the 800-pound gorilla in this space is, is not Intel. It's, it's NVIDIA. Um, or mm -hmm. unless you disagree, in which case I would love to, I'd love no, to hear is. about it. Okay, it good. So we're yeah. on the same page and there. And it's still founder-led, and Jensen is a really smart guy. So are you, it's not only a... Are you shooting behind the duck? Are you shooting ahead of the duck? Where, where, what are you guys targeting? Because you're trying to disrupt NVIDIA, essentially, if, I, if no, I'm, I'm not, not. mistaken. No, you're I don't not. care about NVIDIA. Okay, then tell, me, tell me what duck you're aiming There's at. There's so many. It's a huge, AI is a huge market. NVIDIA builds very expensive, very high performance, very high power products that people like, right, with very high gross margins. Turns out there's a big market for smaller AI engines, open source software, licensable IP, chips they can buy and put in their own products. Like, that's not a $100 billion market. I don't need that. I'd die and go to heaven at $500 million in revenue. So, so I'm building products for other people. Now, some of our products I think are really effective and you know, we'll see, but it's gonna take a while to, you know, to do that. And I have literally more business right now than I can deal with. And, you know, we're working on you know delivering hardware and software, and you know we'll see what happens. Now, um, and and then the other piece is I think the AI revolution's just started from a computer architecture point of view, and also there's going to be an interesting revolution in how we build general purpose computing. So one thing I want to do, this is you know, personally, is I want a really good AI and CPU design that. I can then iterate on as software and models and a whole bunch of things change. And so we design with conscious intent. Like our AI engine is clean and simple. Right? Our software stack, you can go read it, read it yourself, right? It's pretty straightforward. We're getting really good performance on it. And we have a whole bunch of stuff coming in the next six months that raises the bar on it. But if we had to say, hey, there's this new model, go rewrite the software, I don't have 2,000 people with 20 years of technical debt of software. I have 100 great people writing software, and the software stack's clean. And same with the CPU, RS5 CPU, is, it's going to be super fast, but it's a brand new design with brand new architecture, and it's really clean. And if we want to, you know, radically change it, I can do it. I'm not stuck because 
you know, somebody's CPU that's been iterated on for 10 years where three quarters of the code was written by people who don't even work there anymore. Like, like we have, we own our own stuff, which is pretty fun. So like I'll give you a funny example. So everybody yeah. told me, you know, especially there was a big debate about autonomous driving. Should it be driven by a C program that makes the decisions or an AI model? And the assumption was the AI model is this murky, you know, thing that inputs go in and outputs come out and you don't know what the AI code's doing. And they had it exactly wrong. The C program was five billion lines of code written by a hundred people over five years. They had no idea how that C program <laughs> worked. But the weird part is it doesn't have a proper loss function. Whereas the AI model, you trained it with a known data set and when you train it, you know exactly what its error properties are. So which one's better? The AI model you built yesterday from scratch with a known data set with a known error function? Or the C program written by a whole bunch of people over time that nobody knows how it works. I don't know. So <laughs> one of the things I want to do is, you know, build the next generation of computing in a world that's changing fast. So I'm not worried about the 800 pound gorillas because they don't, they don't move as fast. Speaking of that, also, um, yeah. sorry, go for it. It's a fun thing. Uh, do you see other competitors in the Risk Five space as almost like teammates helping legitimize Risk Five, or yeah. do you see? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. So like, like these, yeah, Rebus these... just got Rebus just got funding. The, its company is run by a friend of mine. They got some really good designers. I wish them the best. Sci-Fi is a good company. Krista was one of the original pretty good Berkeley guys, as you pointed out, <laughs> uh, that helped build the Risk Five architecture. Uh, Andy's is a really great company. Their CEOs, he's a character I really like him a lot. They're driving, they're driving real stuff. I know the Ventana guys. Yeah, like the CPU market's huge. Yeah, right. And to be honest, you know, having five. So x86 was the original open source architecture, right? They licensed it to like six, seven companies. And the reason it builds the 80, 6800, 6502 um, was because. Those were single source proprietary architectures and x86, the original 8086 was open. Now it's, it's become proprietary with two, you know, duopoly, you know, controlling it, but it was the open architecture, that's why it won. It didn't win because it was better. All those CPUs were, were crap um, and small and arbitrary. <laughs> 